All right, Mr. Palmer here. Um, last video for this weekend. It looks like um, this one's to do with the time and space complexities of different sorting algorithms. So make sure you've gone over bubble sort, insertion sort, merge sort, quick sort before you proceed with this video. And also your notes actually on big O notation. I should have put that on here too. All right. So while you're doing that, remember it's all about the biryani. Okay. So. Uh, time and space complexity of the different sorting algorithms. So basically what you need to be able to do by the end of this um, video is thinking about time and space complexities, decide which of the following is the most um, efficient algorithm uh, when trying to sort. So remember with big O complexity, there's six different uh, classifications here that we're concerned with. Um, O1, where time is always the same, O N where time inclusive linearly, you've got polynomial complexity, where you have nested loops, um, exponential complexity, uh, which is item um, four, often to do with recursion, uh, factorial um, uh, complexity, where time is growing exponentially because of the number of permutations that we have. Okay, and uh, points four and five, they um, look, they start off slow, but then just explode, all right? And uh, then we have logarithmic um, complexity where the complexity, the, the time and space requirements uh, plateau um, very quickly. So adding new data items doesn't really um, mean that you have more um, uh, time taken for execution or you don't have many increasing memory requirements. All right. So uh, basically the first one, bubble sort. Uh, if you remember the bubble sort, we're swapping um, all the adjacent items in the list if they are not in order and then repeat until no more swaps are necessary. Okay, so if we're thinking about that, basically we've got two loops um, nested in each other, so therefore the time complexity is going to be uh, polynomial uh, n squared because there are two loops. In terms of space complexity, it's a one, all right, because there's only one temporary variable needed for the swap. And that's it for the whole algorithm. Doesn't matter how many swaps you have, you have 10,000 items, and each of them is in the wrong place. You're still only going to have one extra variable. Okay, so it's very, very predictable um, with a bubble sort how much memory you're going to need. Um, with an insertion sort, um, so we're inserting each item from uh, an unsorted list into a new sorted list. Uh, let's just say insert each item from an unsorted list into the correct list and there's a, that really simple um, algorithm there for you and so basically let's think about how that's working uh, again we've got nested loops so it's an n squared okay um, in terms of uh, the space that's needed we it's going to be a one if you have an in place sort okay so you're you have a list and you're moving the items around within the list um, however, it's going to be ON if you're creating a new list because you're going to be uh, duplicating the amount of memory that you need f um, for based on the number of items that you have in that list. Okay. Now with the merge sort, remember this one was a divide and conquer algorithm where you uh, took a list of n in length, split it into sublists until you ended up with list sublist of length one. That sublist of length one is going to be in order, so therefore you start merging them backwards back now. Um, in the order that you require until you end up with one sublist, which is a sorted sublist. Because this is a divide and conquer algorithm, we know that it's going to be um, a log n uh, complexity. Um, however, thinking about we've got n sublists that need to be sorted, so therefore it becomes n log n. All right. Um, in terms of the space requirements, all right, it's um, n because. Uh, we have n sublists of size one, okay? So basically we're just um, increasing the amount of memory that we need by the number of items that we have in the lists, in the original list. Remember, now the next one, or the final one, is quick sort. okay? Again, quick sort is a recursive algorithm. Um, if you remember, we are uh, moving the left pointer until we find um, a left pointer. Uh, the, the left item is larger than the right item, so we swap the two items around, and then we start moving the right pointer along um, until we find another item that's in the wrong order, and we swap them, and we keep doing that until we hit the pointers met in the middle, and therefore we've placed an item. This item now becomes our pivot, 
and then we create two sublists, one on the left and one on the right, and we um, sort, we repeat the, um, the, the algorithm for the two new partitions that we've created. Uh, remember that the algorithm that I showed is sorts in place, okay? So we're sorting on the actual data structure itself, we're not um, creating uh, new data structures every time we use the divide and conquer approach. So with the algorithm that I've shown you in terms of time complexity, if we think about how it's working, it's going to be n log n again, because um, we have log n divisions, all right, it's a divide and conquer approach. However, every item n is going to be compared to that pivot, so therefore it becomes n log n. That's in the best case, all right. In the worst case, because we some um, algorithms, like the introductory one that I showed, where the partition is being used at the first um, element in the list, Therefore, because the partitions aren't equal, then you can't, it's not log in anymore. And therefore, the worst case per, uh, per performance now um, is being used. And we're talking about an n squared polynomial um, performance. In terms of the space complexity, basically, it's log n. Because we are literally, um, the only the only um, memory that you're using are the, the data, is the data that gets popped onto the stack for your recursive calls. And that's going to be limited by the number of divisions that you make. So um, quick sort basically becomes very, very um, space efficient. Okay, so here's your summary um, of the um, five different, sorry, the four different searching techniques in terms of time and space complexity. You should memorize them and you should be able to basically regurgitate that and have an explanation for each of them to explain why they take that time and space complexity. Looking at that table, you should also be able to think about actually which one is the most efficient algorithm. If we were just talking about the space complexity, then quick sort um, and bubble sort would be quite efficient. Insertion sort is also quite efficient in terms of space if you are uh, sorting in place on a list and not creating a, a new sorted um, list or array as you progress through that sorting um, algorithm, all right? The um, other thing to think about then also is the time complexity. So we've got merge sort and quick sort are the two fastest searches that are taking uh, place, sorry, sorts that are taking place. However, um, also bear in mind that the um, a quick sort is not stable um, compared to a merge sort, okay? Um, and so sometimes you will probably want to prefer a merge sort uh, as it's more predictable kind of performance. All right, um, that's it. You should be able to think about those uh, different sorting algorithms in terms of times and space complexity and be able to explain why they have that particular um, complexity in terms of big O. All right, there we go.